Right, so guys, before we progress any further, I'm just going to do this quick build. Uh, basically, this is uh, one of the ring-mounted machine guns that fit onto the back of, of the Annie. And this is going to be the top one. I'm not going to do the bottom one yet because it sits on top of a basket. But there is actually in this kit, there's two of these. And also I've got a couple of more with the other sets because obviously they're all the same. And yeah, so I'll use one of them to make the bottom uh, ring mounted gun when I make the basket. Now I want to put a bit of, what's it called? A bit of feature in this one. Let's put a bit more glue on there. You see how it was fixed. Um, pretty much this part is so flimsy. I actually broke. What see? There's a handle here. There's a bit that comes around the front, and it's like an unlocking handle for the gunners to have. I lost that piece, so that's great. So that's the first bit. It fits around like so, and then there's this seat type thing that fits directly underneath. The aircraft, sorry, my neck is actually hurting me today for some reason. Like, painful hurting. So we'll fit that onto that. Like so. So... Like so. There we have it. Apparently it's supposed to fit like that. Not too sure. Uh, would that actually fit on top of that? I don't think it would. You know. Okay, I need some quick setting stuff on this, I'm afraid. I wonder why that's bent like that, but oh well. So I might have just taken that shot right now. So put about in peel place like so. Get that set and glue down. Don't pull away, please. Thank you. So I quickly let that dry on there. Obviously, it's quick setting glue. So, so this quick setting glue, I've not had much fun with because of how it quickly it reacts. Okay, so that, I'm going to leave that to dry for a bit. I'm going to work on this MG15. Now, in the instructions, I do want to point out very quickly that the drum mag here, I'll just put that on. In the instructions, it tells you to put it on the wrong way around, which is really annoying me because when the MG15 is one of my favourite machine guns, and to put it on wrong is really frustrating. See? Now the glue won't even stick. That's funny that, isn't it? Did it go on like that or like that? I think it's like that. I'll just have a quick check of that. Okay. Okay, so that's that one done. I'll just have a quick little check in the instructions. Oh yeah, it does go on like that. Okay, so that's dry. So I did go for a bit quiet then I did. Like so. Just gonna put a touch of quick setting on this bit. There we go. Yeah, there's a bit of a run. Not much of talk in this bit. There's just more rambling, I will admit. Sorry, guys. There we go. Right, so I'm going to let it dry for a bit, actually. 
going to sort out where I'm going to put this machine gun on and then we'll get paint and a whole lot and we'll place it within the actual aircraft. Kit bashing, what do I know about that? Well, <laughs> most modellers know what the term kit bashing is, but kit bashing is basically putting two kits using parts and making it into one. Duh. Okay, so uh, obviously the J52 I've used is the uh, military one that's in the pack, but uh, if you notice, the Condor Legion um, Junkers comes with uh, wheel spats and of course this one doesn't. So what the case is, I've gone, obviously I've got two other kits in the stash, they're the passenger versions. So what I've done is I've gone and taken one of the spree bags from here. So, uh, let's have a look. So, these parts are the military stuff. So, obviously you have two engine cowlings and parts in between. Lower yell. First, our main engine cover. Your other one is obviously for your other versions. They do have better detail on the seat, so we'll give them that. Obviously you've got your co-pilots, your pilots and your radio operator seat. Along with another um, ring and turret the ring on the side there and obviously some MG's now they're supposed to be MG15's but I digress okay and the last sprue is of course the landing gear so these are the actual parts it's all on this sprue so there's no messing about and simply we attach obviously don't use the ones the kit and just use these ones here uh, I'm just wondering what to do um, I think the best thing to do is I think we'll make these spads up first and we're going to paint them separately because obviously we need some masking and a lot on this bit hmm is that actually a sit mark? Is that, no it's just how the plastic is I believe nice and smooth and obviously I'm just going to glue these straight on to the actual aircraft on the side and get them painted up separately as long as it's got its uh, undercarriage done it looks fine to me so, I'm going to be using the wheels from the actual tyres and that lot from the military kit. I'm going to just use the spads from this. And that is really it, guys. So, I'm going to go away and get all this paint, all, all this assembled up. And then we'll get painting. Okay, so yeah, you can tell I moved on a bit. Uh, here's what, well, I'll show you in a bit, but the masking is all done. And pretty much we've had some nice markings on this. Um, I can't remember, I told you, it's been a while since I've. Don't any more of this kit, but here we are, this is where we're at. Okay, so we're going to put the uh, spats on. I put them together, sand them down, and mask them up, and that's how they turned out. Looks really nice. I've kept the masks for this because they do look like I could use them again on future projects. That's one. Future. Future projects on this one. Also, the tyres have been painted in rubber black. Obviously, they've shown up well. I'm not going to bother doing the insides because obviously you won't mostly see them. As well as that, um, I will get dusty and that lot because obviously in the Spanish terrain they would. So with that, what we simply do is obviously make sure that is it uh, actually. I thought it was a bit tacky. Huh? It's actually a uh, wheel weighted. That's a very nice thing. And uh, what it is is simply we put that on the inside like so. And then glue that into place like that. That is how simple it is to make this one, guys. So what we do is put a touch of glue around the outside like so. Actually, I think I'm going to put a bit more on the inside or on this peg. Come to think about it. Okay, I line that back up again. Well, there we are. Uh, I'll obviously, line it back up and slot it in place like so. Okay, that's the first one done. Second one, do the exact same effect again. So on the peg. There we go. Put this piece on like so. Make sure obviously it's the right way. It doesn't really make a difference which pit goes on where. That piece on there. Like so. 
So there we are, guys. That is really it. Put a bit of glue. So it looks like we've got most of the aircraft up now. I'm glad that it's on its main form of wheels, like so. Just that around a bit more. But there, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-rest this back up again. Make sure they're all level and in place, so like this wheel. Make sure they're all level and in place. Once that's done, we can get away and put these stop or start putting the edges on there. Right, so here we are. This looks what's the top side of it. Uh I do have to admit I do like the marks they've done. I love this the red uh love heart symbols on the side as well as the map markings, hold on, let me just take you out a sit. Take you out a bit more. There we are. That's much better. Refocus as well. So you can see how the aircraft turned out. It looks really, really beautiful, guys, <laughs> I will admit. But you obviously you'll see all this once it's been built. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put the two engines on. Actually put them together. Here we are. Now they are weird how they fit uh the two Cowlings fit together. Basically, you put it on and you file it really down, these two, because apparently there wasn't supposed to be um, any brakes ready for with it. So that's it. Well, I've seen brakes, is it? In different parts. But that's really it, guys. So we're going to put this, these parts out and I'm going to use some thick glue for today. See where it goes. I think that's the right way, I hope. That wants to work. There we are. Some glue on there. Uh, I'll start for this side first. Like so. This is a bit of a weird part how they go together. So there's obviously a little hole which goes out and also the the actual back plate of it has to go together properly. Apparently that goes on somehow. Oh, there we are. Okay, that slots into place. Like that. Yes, okay, that one on. And last but not least, we're gonna put this side one on. Yep. And there we are guys, that is literally it. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna put a bit of uh, thin glue in the sides here. Like that. There we are. Okay, look, I know the camera's low on battery, so I better go on with it. Okay, so that part. Make sure that's pushed into place. Actually, I have a feeling that is spot on. There we are. There we are guys, right, the two starboard and port engines are in place, I have to say, now the engines are, it does look like the real thing, just going to see in camera view, yep, yeah, there we are, and I do need to paint them round black again, they should be painted the same colour as the top bit, but it's going to be really a lot of hassle to do it the same colour, so I'm just going to do it the same colour as what it was on the top of the fuselage here as well as the sides and that's it guys so with that with that done I'm going to leave that to dry and I don't know see where it goes from there I think I'll do this main engine in the front here then we start doing the last details and varnish the whole lot that'll be done then simples okay guys right I need to talk to you about a few things that have gone on with this project uh, <laughs> Um, the first thing is I've noticed, um, I don't know why I didn't do it, so I'm not sure whether I recorded any of the masking across the side. I know we did the painting and that lot, but I, some, for some reason I cannot find the video source for the um, 
the masking. Okay, so a lot of things happen. I used uh, the Montex masks, as you said. So here we are. That's the Montex mask set I used. Um, item code is K four eight O. Sorry, K four eight O seven O. So there we are. Um, right. So the engines have gone on well. I've burned them up really well. And it looks really nice. Um, obviously on the front and the sides, the BMW engines. Uh, the weathering has consisted of spraying through some rubber black, I think it was, or was it dark grey? Um, I think it was rubber black, I think, and then spray through, and that was mixed with a hint of dark earth to portray uh, the dust getting into the engines that lot, which was obviously a common thing, because obviously in Spain, and these had no um, desert filters on, which was weird. Uh, the other thing as you might notice at the top, we've done the dorsal turret on the top here, that is now done and dusted, and if I gently spin you round, uh, you can see from here, uh, from this side, the actual uh, doors on the side have been opened up and had wire, well it's stretched through, to create the, um, yeah, to create the doors and that lot. So that looks really, really nice, guys. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use a matte varnish just over the top. And yeah, that's really it. So I'm using this um, this mix of ultra, it's AK Interactives. It's ultra matte varnish. And I've mixed it with a bit of Tammy acrylic thinner to just to thin that down because it is very, very strong stuff, guys. You really just need one quick coat over top of this, and that is done. So, hmm. Well, they came through a bit. I don't know. Anyway, pour this into the cup. So, like I said, just a quick spray over the top of this. Yeah, okay. We'll turn that up a bit more. Okay. Now I've said need just a quick spray of the top. That's all we need, just over the top there. Because basically it's a quick, fast acting um paint resolvent and it looks like we do have to top up this tank of <laughs> Don't you hate it when things happen like this? But um, yeah, pretty much what it is, it's ultra matte varnish. It's very quick setting. It's very, very fine. So don't need much at all whatsoever. Just need a quick spray and that will be it of this. Just a quick spray all over. Like so. Across the wings here. Fuselage, tail. Right. Okay, so while that tops up, we go just twist it round to the side. And I can already see, for a matter of fact, it's already settling on the top here. You might not be able to see it, but once it's done, you obviously, you will be able to. So, quick around the front here. Yes, this, I think this is a bit too high, this pressure. Spare. Just quick. Over spray on the top, and we're going to twist it around again. This side, and come here, you, and quickly do. Yeah, I do go quite in this stage. Just try to get it all on. Okay, 
Okay, so I want to know what's foaming on the top here. I'll switch that off for a second, that's really annoying me. Why is this foaming on the top? Hmm. Okay. Okay, so a lot of bubbles are produced out of that. I'm not going to really touch that model because. I'm just going to touch the base. This is why you're handy for putting a, a base coat layer. Just over the top, like so. Okay, so that's really it, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Go and make sure it's all um, matte varnished down, and we'll pretty much see how it goes because, yeah, it's not a fine, it's a really fine project. I'm really enjoying this, guys. It's pretty much nearly finished now, uh, I will admit. I'm still wondering how we're going to do this underside parts here, but. Um, We'll soon see how we get on. But really, apart from that, guys, I'm just going to do this about Martinish. And we'll finish the last bits off. Because it looks like this really been, has been a fun project. Right here, guys, here we are. So, yeah, I did. Well, I gave a, a matte varnish, pretty much. And it, to be honest, it's turned it down just the way I wanted it. Uh, it's not too matte, if you understand what I mean. But it's not too shiny as well. I just wanted a bit of shine on it just to represent that corrugated metal across the top there. But really, apart from that, this is mostly really done, guys. If I'm honest, it is really, really nice kit. Um, I'll put the aerial on, as you can see there. Aerial will obviously be fixed in place. There is actually another part, actually. Where have I put that? Uh, where's that gone? There we are. So, this is another thing, this is, um, I'm trying to think what piece this is, obviously I think that's for the the radio operator as well, oh that's a bit loose, let's go put some uh, quick setting glue on it, that sits there somewhere, and then obviously we have a, a single piece uh, speedometer I think it was, which is obviously spinning for the electrical charges and that lot, but that's really it guys, it's mostly done. So what we're going to do, is I'm going to bring you in, and we're going to pull this in here, takes out the wing. But as you can see, it is absolutely beautifully done guys. Now I'm just going to bring you up a bit more, swivel you around, sorry. Okay, uh, bear with me, sorry. Okay, all right, that's the best I can do. Uh, actually, let's zoom in a bit more. There we are. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this glass nose piece off the front. So this is the part we're all been waiting for, guys. Just to take this bit off on the front. See where we get to. Oh, forgot to mention one thing. We have actually our props painted up. They're just drying still. So here we go. We're going to take the plastic, well not plastic, masking off and see what we're left with because I'm worried I can get this masking off uh, ok, may have a problem ok there we are right, that's the first one off fingers crossed guys it's going to be looking very, very nice. Okay, right, okay, so the paint has actually um, put these down proper and good. So I'm just going to take the one off this side. Okay, we had to have a problem there. Right, uh, I said I was going to say this one off like so. Here I'll take these one off the front here. So Montex masks are very, very tricky to take off. Get a little joke there guys? No, okay. 
Okay. Right, so I'm going to have a bit of trouble getting these off. So, it's going to, so it is going to take some time. It is going to take some time to get these off. But not to worry. We'll see where we get to. So obviously I'm not going to keep you waiting that lot. But um, yeah, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put the aerials on. Obviously the P2 tube as well. The props. And we are pretty much done here, guys. Right, guys. I'm just giving, giving this bit on the front here, obviously where the props are just a little bit of a a wash hint around there might have to water it down just a bit more I think like so just around the middle of the props here and pretty much guys what the this part of the video now is we are pretty much done and dusted from us guys um, there's not a lot I can do more to it just yet because um, I need to get some obviously some plastic strips or some kind of plastic sheeting for the next step which is the actual um, the gun emplacement underneath I've had a look online and there is no well I w from what I've seen, anyway, it's not as in like what you've seen, or if you can help me out, guys, it'd be really nice. But there's no company, not even Checkmaster, that makes the, um, the basket for underneath. Now, if as you saw from the Stoke Model Show, there was actually a picture of a 172nd J52. Now, I spoke to the guy who made that, and it was a uh, Checkmaster. Um, conversion kit that could make the bomber variant but it, they only do them in one semi second which was a real shame because that would be really ideal for me as you know for this little Annie here well I say little look at the size of it here but anyway guys we are pretty much nearly done now I'm just giving a wash to the front props here and the middle of the spinners like so I'm just going to give a bit of a wash to the door on the other side. Um, this is the open door for the actual, oh, for the actual locking handle on there, like so. I think we're almost done, guys. Because, yeah, I've really enjoyed this project, and I think most of you have. Well, I hope so, because obviously, you know. And I do waffle on a bit, as many people say, but I waffle on just to help anyone out. But that's really it, guys. I've just done that piece, so now all I need to do left is to paint the the tip of the pito tube here, which is on the front here. I don't know if you can see. Uh, just grab some silver. Uh, it's already obviously as you saw it's already been matte varnished and that lot so we don't need any more of that. Just a bit of silver on the front here. Like so. Now obviously for the silver on the props I used a different range of paints. I used AK's is it AK or uh no 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 it's MIG ammo, sorry. Uh MIG ammo paints and I have to say guys these worked a real real treat. I'm just going to paint that underneath, and that's it. There we are, guys. That's it. You've just witnessed the final bit of the J52. Well, I say final bit. I'm not sure whether to add the um, aerial cable for the top yet, just yet anyway, but I think I better do. Um, I'll go use some easy line for that. But apart from that, guys, I have to say I've really enjoyed this build. I'll turn it around for you to see as well. But... If I'm asked, I have to say this is one of the best builds I've ever done in my lifetime. Uh, I just hope you guys enjoyed it along. There is going to be, um, obviously this is the main build for the, this particular aircraft. But um, I'm, I'm thinking of making a diorama for this uh, project. So please stay tuned for future reference for that and we'll see how we get on. Um, yeah, I really have enjoyed this guys. Thank you so much for getting along with me. 
And obviously you'll have some nice detailed photographs of what I've done and the build and everything else. And that's really it guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and please stay tuned for the next build. I think I might do something different for this one but obviously we've got the Coffee State models on the go in a minute but there we are. Okay guys, thank you and obviously I'll try and get some bits done for the underneath for the bottom gunner. That's going to take quite a while to do but apart from that guys, thank you very much for watching. Happy modelling, take care and I shall see you all in the next one. So with that, cheers and goodbye for now.